Yeah. Comedy without booze, boy, that would be a struggle. That would suck. I mean, our whole job is entertaining drinkers. I wonder what it would be like if we had liquor-free comedy nights. Have you played? You have to have played, like, those weed rooms. Yes. Yes. Like those in, are too crazy. They're though. insane. We did the Toronto one, the yep. underground room. Yep. There was no air for the candles on the table. The candles were running on a promissory note. Yeah. There was no oxygen in the room. <laughs> no. It was all just weed smoke. I, I was on stage midway through jokes and having second thoughts. About, like, every linear thought was a tree branch yes. that was growing. Where yes. I'm like, which one do I follow? Well, not only that, what did I already talk about? Yes. Yeah, if what, have I, hour... what have I covered <laughs> already? I have no fucking idea. Do you guys know? Well, when I was doing it, I was doing it with Tripoli, and Tripoli was sober at the time. Okay. But we walk in this room, and the secondhand smoke is a fucking real thing. That's what I mean. Yeah. I hadn't hit a joint. Oh, you had I was going to wait till after my set. I don't like doing comedy high, and I felt I felt high on stage. Ooh. And it's that thing where it's like, well, you just got to run with it. Yeah. You, can't, you can't fight the tide. Don't not, swim upstream. You're not getting any better. No. You just got to... Just no. keep going. Uh, I did. There's a show that a uh, guy, Andy Haynes, had called Midnight Run where you'd smoke right before you got on stage. And you just hit this big joint. And I was doing great. And then I had this huge setup. And then my brain just, the bottom fell out. Everything <laughs> fell out. All ideas, all thoughts, my name. And I just went, it was like, and then the, the girl turns to me. I got to go. And I walked in the middle of a no. setup, and that cru it was a crushed ending because people were laughing so hard. Because you're it, so fucked up. Because I just pulled the ripcord. <laughs> I, I literally was like, I had a parachute that came out my backpack that pulled me out of the room. Sometimes marijuana is your friend. Yep. And sometimes it'll fuck up your whole set. But sometimes it'll go, why? Why is that? Uh -huh. And then people go, yeah, why is that? And then you're off on this tangent yep. that you probably would have never been on. Uh -huh. And that tangent might be the best part of that set. Yeah. I mean, I think about people that were, like, uh, from very regimented backgrounds and went into the military, you know, in the 60s and then hit their first joint and went, this is dumb. Yeah. I hate this. Yeah. Where they, because that's the thing about, I found about marijuana is it introduced truths about myself that I found f hard to face. Yeah. Uh, and they were minute, minute truths. There weren't anything big that I, that I was afraid of or something, you know, that, like, I really want to kill someone or something stupid. But it was just little things that would, like, bubble up yeah and I, I think that's 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 the craziest thing about that plant to me well the idea that it makes you paranoid right that's it uh-huh it's the paranoia right oh i don't like pot it makes me paranoid i really think it makes you hyper aware yep. of all sorts of things you've been suppressing that's it because when i'm feeling good when i'm happy like i've been a good person i've been nice to people i've done the things i'm supposed to do i can get high and i enjoy the shit out of it but when I got loose ends, uh -huh. when I got things that are fucking with me, yeah. or, you know, maybe like something that went wrong in my life or whatever, and then I smoke pot, then it just gets 